What is up guys, this is Kiro back with another video on the Redmi Note 10 Pro and in this video I'm gonna be showing you the latest Evolution X ROM I have been using this ROM for about or 20 hours and if you want to flash this ROM on your Redmi Note 10 Pro you can find the flashing guide in the description and let me tell you on this particular build I tried to actually flash the 13.0.1 firmware vendor but that did not work for me it was showing error maybe because I was coming from a different ROM so that's why I have flashed the latest 13.0.10 I guess I have downloaded from the Xiaomi firmware updater.com I'll link it below and the flashing guide for this particular ROM will be linked in the description box below too. Let me show you the about section. This is how it looks like. We have the Evolution X logo up top and we have the Android version as Android 13. The security patch here is latest of March 5th, 2023 as you can see and the Evolution X version shows as 7.7 .7 Lecon or something like that and we have the sweet name because this is the Redmi Note 10 Pro Indian version stock kernel as the 4.14 Vantam kernel the build date here again shows as 2nd April 2023 maintainer is of course Zaid Khan so huge thanks to the developers of this ROM and we have the Snake status as enforcing in the system panel this is how it looks like we have the system updater and you can check for updates from right here and we have the gesture settings we have the quick tap or the back tap actions you can customize it between these many options and we have the quickly open camera, system navigation gestures. In the settings of it, we have the pill length, pill radius, advanced gesture options. And there is the extended swipe actions. And you can customize it between these many options. And we have the IME button space. You can customize that. We also have the back gesture animation, haptic feedback, and the swipe to invoke assistant. Let me actually do that. And as you can see, it is working perfectly fine. Left edge, right edge customization is there. And we have the amount of screen height to be used for the back gesture. There is also the three button navigation and there is the hold for assistant option. Let me go back. There is the one handed mode, but I have customized it to this like swiping down for the notification. But I'll show you why I did that. We have the double tap to pulse notification and we have the press and hold power button action for the power menu and the digital assistant. You can switch it and the swipe right screenshot is also working perfectly fine. There is a share, edit, delete and the Google lens option. There will be the capture mode feature if there is a lot of space. Also on the bottom of the system settings, there are the thermal profiles and you can particularly customize these to multiple options like default benchmark browser, camera, dialer, gaming, streaming, etc. options. And these are the stock apps that are present in this ROM. But some of the apps like Fresh Walls, the PixArt and stuff is there because I was restoring my Google App Data Backup. And talking about that, yes, the apps did restore perfectly fine. But the app data like the call log, the messages and stuff did not restore over here. So if you're switching to this particular build, be careful about that. Back up that like back up the SMS and call logs with a separate app like this SMS backup and restore. Afterwards, you can switch to this particular ROM. This is happening even for the Redmi K20 Pro 2 on the Evolution X ROM. It cannot simply restore the Google Dialer's call log and the Google's messaging app data. So I would say do not rely on the Google app data backup for this particular ROM. And currently guys, one thing is a little weird that the unlimited Google photo storage is by default turned off. So that's why you may have to re-enable it. And after that, you have to open Google photos. And by that only you will get the unlimited Google photo storage. Otherwise, by default, the unlimited Google photo storage right now on the Evolution X ROMs will not be enabled by default at least. One more thing I have to say, I have used the earlier build, the February or January build of the Evolution X ROM. On the redmi note 10 pro there it was not lagging this much like on this particular build by default if you keep opening multiple apps like the twitter play store and stuff if you keep opening everything the ui will lag like a hell lot and here i went to the developer options of course you have to enable the developer option separately i did enable this background process limit at most four processes with that i'm using and afterwards, yes, the UI is totally usable. There is no problems at all. It keeps almost like four apps in the memory. But I have to say, I have to enable that every time I reboot because otherwise the option gets disabled. So yeah, it definitely has some memory management or memory leak kind of issue where it will lag so much on the like current app that you are launching or using. Yes, it will keep the apps in memory, but after that, it will just start lagging so much that it cannot scroll. You cannot really type in an app or you cannot really search in that particular app. So yeah, that bug I have faced. That's why I have enabled the developer options. And in that, I have enabled this background process limit. And after that, it has been working perfectly fine, almost smooth enough as it used to. I have also enabled this force 120 Hertz refresh rate from the developer settings. And I think that helped a little bit with the UI animations and stuff. And one more, it's a bug or a feature. I don't really know that like swiping from the corners, as you can see, 
sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't from the left side as you can see it is working but if you just do that sometimes it's not working that I have seen as you can see right now okay so I have to do it from all the way to the right I guess from here maybe yeah from here it is working sometimes it's just weird that it's not like bringing the quick setting panel as you can see so yeah, this is really weird I have to go to the center to actually bring the quick setting panel normally and here if you just tap on the corners yes it opens the battery settings if you tap on the left side here it will open the clock so this is happening I don't know it's a bug or a feature I cannot really toggle it on or off from the settings but this is a little weird that I have been noticing as you can see it, I cannot simply bring the quick setting panel from here I have to do it from here or I have to do it from the like here this side now let's focus on the ROMs things pixel kind of launcher because the evolution X launcher has been removed there is the session disabling option but there is no more the double tap to sleep anywhere in the home screen the wallpaper that I'm using is from the fresh walls app you can definitely download the app from play store I'll link it below and to the left of the home screen we have the Google's discover page and swiping up will get to the app drawer and the searching and stuff is working perfectly fine no need to worry about it swiping down will get you to the quick setting panel and as usual quick setting panel stays dark like this in the light theme too and I have added a couple of toggles you can see all the toggles I'm not gonna talk about them every time but yeah we have the screen recorder and the HEVC recording and stuff all these things are there and they should be working perfectly fine even the refresher toggle and stuff is working fine now talking about the stock camera yes we are getting the MIUI camera right out of the box and it is right now after flashing the latest Indian firmware it is working perfectly fine let me just take a quick portrait selfie take another photo and as you can see I took two photos let me actually show you this one with the rear camera worked perfectly fine and the processing is very seamless no issues it is a 16 megapixel photo even the portrait selfie the quality is good enough and even the processing with this is good enough too 16 megapixels so portrait selfie or like normal photos and stuff are working perfectly fine even in video settings we do get up to 4k 30 fps option that is working fine and even in the pro mode we have the pro mode video you can record with the like wide balance shutter speed iso etc customization and that too up to 4k 30 fps so no issues with that and even the super macro lens and stuff is working perfectly fine let me just go up close yeah it is working fine i would say also the 0.66x or ultra wide angle lens and the 2x telephoto lens is working perfectly fine you do not need to worry about lens switching and stuff everything is working great over here also there are the slow motion panorama vlog mode etc you can download them and there is a documents mode too if you want to just snap a document just quickly you can definitely do that with this particular rom no issues whatsoever so the MIUI camera is present by default and that's great to see of course in terms of customization we ha still have a lot of them like the theming settings dark theme and stuff then we have the lock screen font style plethora of lock screen fonts are there the hundred plus fonts are there for the lock screen clock font and the headline and body fonts are there too plethora of options for that and we have the lock screen clock format and you can choose the single line or double line icon pack signal icon styles wi-fi icon styles etc are there and we still have plethora of customizations for the series bar too but for some reason i could not simply find the vaulty icon over here which is a little weird i tried to go into everything like this status bar icons and stuff and here also there is no vaulty icon for some weird reason there is the 4g instead of lte and stuff but then again no vaulty icon i could not simply find that and we have the notification customization just like this i'll just touch everything over here so that you can glimpse an eye on that and we have the power menu stuff then we have the gestures we have the long press power and toggle torch and stuff then we have the lock screen customization plethora of options are here as well in the buttons we have this show volume panel in the left side and the per app volume control i'll show you the volume panel later we have the animations and stuff screen of animation and the power menu animations and in the mist settings again we have the game space the smart pixels and the unlimited google photo storage unlock higher fps in games the pulse volume panel timeout and we have this usb configuration and stuff for convenience you can definitely use that now let's talk about the battery settings this is how it looks like we do have the battery temperature but we do not get to see the battery charging cycle the current or design battery capacity those things simply does not show up but there is a battery optimization you can choose it per app it shows that i'm getting about six hours and 40 minutes of estimated screen on time which is not that great but yeah, it is decent i would say because my device is quite old already and my battery health shows as 83 percent i would say as of right now do not rely on this estimated data because i did not give it much time 
but again i'll try to post it after using it for long term but overall in my experience the battery life totally is decent and the fast charging is also working perfectly fine you do not need to worry about it but you have to make sure the device is cooled down because it's summer time so the charging speed is a lot lower sound and vibration settings media call ring etc volume controls and we have the vibration and haptics but i had to actually disable the touch feedback it was a little weird and lagging with the ui and haptic feedback i would say we have the phone ringtone pattern changing option of the vibration and we have the per app volume control dial per tone in call vibration screen locking sound and stuff and we have the me sound enhancer we have this youth edition and stuff and there is also the other bluetooth headset presets and with that the sound quality is great i would say and the choose preset option is also there there is the scene mode also let me go back we have the clear speaker option as well silent and media mute the smart kind of option and the haptic feedback intensity you can customize from right here now talking about the volume panel this is how it looks like you can expand the volume panel just like this and if you're playing music this is how it will look like per app volume control is there it looks like this you can expand the volume panel just like this and here let me show you from the lock screen how it looks yeah this is how the lock screen looks pretty beautiful we have this android 13 kind of ui and of course you can expand the volume panel and switch the output device from right here too oh and i forgot to talk about the widgets yes the subscriber account widget is working perfectly fine and the battery widget i have added sometimes it doesn't work but right now as you can see it is working perfectly fine it opens the phone's battery settings and the bluetooth battery or the bluetooth settings from right here so yeah two things are working perfectly and the clock widget and stuff everything is working fine the animations and stuff are very smooth also with the google dialer yes vault calling and stuff should be working fine there is much more options like the record call video call etc and the add call options and stuff let's talk about the basic things yes it passes the safety net test right out of the box for some reason i had a bank server issue so i could not really set up the yono sbi app yesterday it had some maintenance issues and stuff and i am able to right now use the uno sbi app and i did set up perfectly fine later on so yeah the banking apps right now are working perfectly fine including with the google pay amazon pay everything is working great the dear info four stays as l1 over here so you can stream netflix or amazon prime videos in 1080p the ir blaster works perfectly fine you do not need to worry if you're watching that light over there also after enabling the toggle of the unlimited photos backup yes it is working perfectly fine there is the wallpapers and styles you can change the wallpapers and there is this live bloom and stuff where it uses the gyroscope to actually give you a 3d effect of the wallpapers all those wallpapers are here we have the feathers option as well then the living universe and stuff you can of course download these wallpapers there is a papers wallpaper app too and here we have the wallpaper colors and the basic colors up to 16 options the dark theme themed icons and the shortcuts you can actually change from right here but for some reason the google home is not working as you can see it's doing this kind of animation and right now if i try to set it over here it's kind of force closing let's try with something else like the camera okay still doing that even the flashlight is doing this not really sure why shortcuts are a little buggy i would say it's not working really for me at least and we have the app grid you can set it up to 5x5 five five. in the display settings we have the brightness level adaptive brightness extra dim feature and there is the intensity customization for that and we have the lock screen customization in here we have the privacy settings and the control from lock device but that's just not working and we have the always show time and info that's the always on display week screen for notification you can disable it and in the advanced settings we have this ambient display option and there we have this pickup option and if you enable the ambient display the wake screen for notification automatically enables i don't know why but yeah there is the screen saver mode as well for some reason you can use it i guess and we have the display size and text option font size display size and the high contrast text you can enable the night light is there and you can change the intensity and customize it and schedule it there is a display mode there is the outdoor bright sun mode and the automatic anti flicker or the disturbing is there and there is a color calibration rgb control picture adjustments are also there and i have to say by default it was on natural color it used to look a lot more weird i have been using it with a saturated one or you can go with the boosted there is the rgb control here as well there is the smooth display and the double tap to wake prevent accidental wake up wake up on plug and there is the full screen apps and you can toggle it on or off for each app in the security settings there is the quick unlock let me just set up the face unlock Right now, let me show you the locking and unlocking things. I have already set up everything. And here, let me actually show you the pickup option. I just put the device on the desk and pick it up on my hand. As you can see, it does have the pickup gesture working perfectly fine. And just tapping the fingerprint scanner. Yes, it is unlocking perfectly fine. And let me try one more time. Yup, the fingerprint scanner speed is not a problem over here. 
is unlocking perfectly fine and the animation definitely looks good the double dot wake and stuff is working perfectly fine no issues now let me actually show you the face unlock and for that i have to swipe up on the lock screen and as you can see it unlocks there is a big black border on the front camera when it's using the front camera so it will help while you are doing a video call or something it won't give you a halo effect on your screen let me try one more time yep face unlock is pretty fast no issues also the app lock let me actually show you i just tap the lock tap and it shows like this i have to tap the fingerprint scanner and as you can see it has opened so yeah the app lock has been working perfectly fine no issues even after a reboot it works great so in some rooms after a reboot the app locks goes buggy and it removes the apps which were locked but here that's not the case app lock is working perfectly fine even after a reboot and talking about the overall performance of the ui well i would say yes if you do that like background task limit and stuff the performance is good enough for daily driving and everywhere you will see smoothness i would say and even with 120 hertz the overall experience of this it's very smooth as you can see right now over here the scrolling of twitter is very smooth no issues whatsoever but you have to enable that background process limit otherwise you will face a lot of lags on your current app and here are the android 20 gigabyte score with a cpu stress test on this particular build to give you an idea of the overall ui performance of the latest evolution x rom so give this video a thumbs up if you liked it subscribe to the channel if you have not yet please share this video with your friends if you want them to know about the latest build of the evolution x rom on the redmi note 10 pro and how it's running I would say yes, it's a decent experience. It has a lot of like changes and smart security patch and stuff. But I would say the experience definitely was better with the previous builds where it used to give a lot of smoothness and a lot of features without these kind of hassles of tweaking the developer options and stuff. That's how I personally feel. Let me know in the comments what do you guys think. Until next time, this is Tito from KDNTX signing off for today. And I'll be catching you guys in the next one. Bye now.